Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I am here in the, uh, the, our Sundance studio, which is being sponsored by Saratoga Spring Water. I want to give them a huge shout out because it costs a lot of money to be here. Sponsors are important. Thank you so much. Uh, but the reason I get to be here today is to talk to the people behind Fremont. And uh, I really want to give you a congratulations and how much I enjoyed your movie. Um, uh, congrats on being part of Sundance. But uh, most people who are going to be watching this interview right now will have not seen the film yet. So I hate doing this, but how have you been describing it to like friends and family? Well, thank you for having us here. Um, to friends and family, um, to anyone, uh, it's, it's a story about a young Afghan woman who used to work as a translator for the US military and has moved, recently moved to the Bay Area and lives in the city of Fremont, which is right outside San Francisco and by day works in a Chinese fortune cookie factory. And uh, it's about someone restarting their life, in a, a stranger in a strange land. Um, I have to ask you, you have never made a film before, and uh, I, I really want to know how you got involved in this and what the experience was like, uh, you know, being front and center in a movie. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, that was my first time acting in a movie. Uh, First, I received an email from my, one of my friends and I sent an email to Babak and we had uh, like uh, so many times uh, Zoom call and after that we decided to work together. Actually, he decided to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like, yeah, it was probably his decision. Yeah, probably. exactly. <laughs> and yeah. Um, uh, but what was it like, the experience of making a movie compared to maybe what you thought it would be? Uh, I have to say I worked uh, as a journalist in Afghanistan for two years, so I had in for, uh, I had experience in front of camera and microphone, uh, so it was for me easy to be in front of cameras. Uh, but working with the uh, cast and uh, film crew and director was like uh, first time. Uh, I really enjoyed it and gr I learned a lot of, from it and also from Dunya's character. You play a, uh, an integral part of this film. Um, actually, instead of me saying it, can you talk about who you play and what was it about this part that said, I want to do this? Um, well, I play a doctor, a psychiatrist who's, uh, I, I've heard somebody call him eccentric recently, which was a, maybe a kinder description than, than I've been using when I've been telling people about it. But uh, uh, yeah, just a, an oddball, you know, psychiatrist. I guess one of these people that probably when he started in the profession was quite good, but has maybe gone to seed over the years. Um, and uh, yeah, basically when Babak reached out and I read the script, I was just excited to have been asked, you know, uh, as opposed to like when I got the script to audition for the Elmer Fudd movie. Uh, no, but, but, this, but this, I mean, it was a beautiful, beautifully written script and it's kind of a dream really to get something like that and be offered a role in it when you, the quality is glaring from the get-go. No, completely. Um, one of the things, I really enjoyed the way you shot it in black and white and how you framed uh, all the scenes. So can you talk about how you decided on the aesthetic of the film? Yes, uh, Laura Valadeo, who's the uh, cinematographer on the film, uh, and I, um, we just had a gut feeling this would work better in black and white um, to sort of, let's say, show the, in essence, the uniformity of, a, of, pla of places, whether it's a commuter town like Fremont or a major city like San Francisco. And, uh, and having seen, you know, having, having locations in mind, such as the cookie factory and uh, the inside of Donia's apartment, the psychiatrist's office, everything just seems to me, to, to us, to me and Laura, to work better in black and white. And the framing um, is primarily static. There's some handheld, uh, motion, uh, shots in motion when she's walking, Donia's walking around the city. But uh, the static element is to, let's say, um, I mean, I'm, medium photography was a big influence in the way we decided to shoot this film, medium format photography. And um, I think the good thing, great thing about medium format photography is that um, you allow things in your mind to happen within, you imagine what's happening within the frame, you know what I mean? Like you don't, you don't expect things to come in and out of it. You expect to focus on what's there. 
and that's with the static elements here. Um, I would hope the audience would really, when they see, for example, I don't know, Donia and uh, Dr. Anthony in the, in the office of the psychiatrist, they're comp they know that what they're watching, nothing's going to happen now. No one's going to come into the frame to take a piece of paper or to pass on information. It's just that which is happening. That was the intention. There's a, a, a really great scene with you and your boss. Um, I don't want to talk specifics because I want people to, you know, it's too early for anything sp specific, but there's a scene with you and your boss in the factory uh, and it's very long take and he's talking with you. Um, I don't, again, I don't want to be specific, but it's, it's very well done. And um, can you sort of talk a little bit about working on scenes like that where, um, you know, you're sharing a scene with someone else. You, again, you've never done a movie well, and what it's like when the camera is on you for that long. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, I got it. Um, that was the first time I used that things. And yeah, um, it doesn't feel like um, not being OK with that. So I, I said I had experience in front of camera, so I'm, I'm fine with it, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, also a long take like that, you mentioned without revealing what was happening. Um, you, you're relying on both of them pulling it off and, and, and it li they literally got it in the first take. Um, and um, their reactions to each other was, um, it wasn't really rehearsed. We didn't, we, we didn't have time for rehearsals. I don't like rehearsing anyways. So it was very natural. We just, you know, said this is good. do this, do that, and they went with it, and they reacted to each other's, you know, um, expressions or uh, words and things like that. Uh, one thing I want to add: um, I really tried to be myself in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's right out of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, one of the things about this is that you obviously had to make this on a budget. You had, a, um, I'm sure, a tight schedule. So, what were some of the challenges that you were up against to try to pull this off in, with the, you know, the limitations that you were given? You know, our limitations were similar to most independent films. I think um, shoot, we didn't have too many shooting days and all these things. And uh, we um, were shooting. COVID was still around, so we were f fearful of that. You know, someone falls ill, we, we have to. Um, how do we do this? Which I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, uh, yes, indeed. Um, and um, but other than that, I mean, we had a great production team: Rachel Fong, Sydney Shroff, George Rush, Laura Wagner, Chris Martin. They were really on top of things, and the crew as well was. Um, everyone really, they were good sports. Basically, I think everyone um, really was on board to. Um, how should I say this? Um, they, I mean, we all knew, let's say, whatever limitations we had, no one was surprised by it. Um, and it's a fact that when you make independent films, you are faced with such things. But having, like I said, you know, um, in scenes where, um, for example, Greg, who's a professional, he's done this a whole bunch of times, um, helps, of course, um, because um, he's, let's say, yeah, he's on top of it from the word go. Like with Greg, we didn't like, there's no audition. I, I mean, I, I wanted Greg for the role because I've been a big fan of his for years. So it wasn't like, hey, you know, let's have an audition, see how you do. It was kind of like, will you be in this film, please? And when he said yes, it was great. And um, and like, you know, when, they, when he, for example, sat in front of a non-professional actress, I think his presence helped her and her presence helped him. So I think those kind of things, um, helped us move things forward quicker than we thought we would, if that makes sense, what I'm saying. No, 100%, 100%. One of the things, though, that, um, uh, oh, yeah, one of the things that I uh, uh, appreciate is that, you know, um, there's a lot of people who uh, helped America in Afghanistan that have been brought over to America, and I don't want to say that they're forgotten about, but they're forgotten about, and um, I guess I am saying it. And so, uh, I'm just, was that one of the reasons why you felt compelled to tell this story? Originally, when I heard about translators living in Fremont, that's what drew my attention. Because of the way they were living, they had been forgotten about, neglected, and things like that. So that was, you know, the original idea of doing a film about a translator stemmed from that. That I found it shocking, um, but the, the story kind of cha sort of changed. Uh, yeah. But the um, the reality is that yes, there are people who risk their lives um, for America. Um, over there, and once they came here, they were kind of abandoned, and uh, which is something that's often repeated in history. Yeah, I mean, the America's great at doing this. 
they're really it's fantastic i can say this as an american um i am not american so i won't say this right i, I can say this america's great at forgetting people um so talk a little bit about for the two of you when you think back on the shoot what's like the day or two that you will always remember I mean, I think just the first scene, even because I didn't know exactly what I was getting into, and I just met her, and from the first scene, I felt so comfortable with her and felt like we had a good chemistry and a good rhythm in what we were doing, and that there was no reason to worry. And she was very inspirational to me because I felt like this is quite a feat to star in a movie uh, fresh out of Afghanistan and new to the English language and. Here she's given this incredible burden, and sometimes I thought, does she uh, memorize some of this dialogue by the syllable, or, or you know, it, because I mean, just in seeing you here, I've seen how much your English has just uh, really blossomed compared to even then, you know. So um, I think that comfort level really made it easy. I don't think we had to do many takes of anything other than for coverage. We just kind of had this nice rhythm going, and and uh, just nailed it, as they say. Uh, I want to add, uh, new in a country, it's not easy to learn a new language and be with people and make company. Uh, so, in the set, in the seat, seat, set, yeah, on the set, uh, <laughs> Greg, Jeremy, everyone, Babak, everyone was supportive and I really appreciate it. Uh, and I tried my best. No, you did a great job. Um, I really have to, I could talk a lot more, but um, we have to wrap due to the time limitations. Uh, but I'm just going to say I'm really happy you guys came in. I'm really uh, so happy for you that you're part of Sundance. And thank, th you. thank you for your time. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you so much. I just want to add the little things. Don't forget, about, uh, don't forget about Afghanistan, about women of Afghanistan, and stay with them, uh, talk about them, have, uh, like, uh, remember them, what's going on there, and their they lost their rights. I am glad you brought that up. You're here. Yes. Thank you.